This is the Kingdom Movement Podcast, a place where we will explore through conversation how discipleship, theology, and community really can transform our world. Hey guys, this is Jake, back with another episode of the Kingdom Movement Podcast, and I have to apologize guys, so we haven't had an episode out in two weeks. Um, One was honestly, I just dropped the ball, and the other one, I was traveling um, to a different state here in the the US, Um, but I'm excited because I've been able to kind of sit down, carve out some time, and give us a game plan for the next few weeks to end the semester Um, with kind of this topic that I think is really important. It's actually came and was formed from a message that um, I just felt was laid on my heart. And, you know, one of the things that we'd wanted to do with the pod, but never had a chance was to do a series on the Sermon on the Mount. And while this isn't necessarily like what I envision that series to look like, I think it can become a really relative and really important um, way to think of the Sermon on the Mount or think through how we can engage the Sermon on the Mount and like why it matters, like why does Jesus ask us to operate in this kind of way. But um, so what we're going to kind of do over the next few weeks, I want to break it down. Today, I'm going to introduce the topic, kind of the theme or the, if you will, if this were a message, the title that we're going to explore is the power of the upside down kingdom. So I'll explain what that means in just a second. But we're going to talk about today in this episode, um, what exactly is power, like, uh, and the power dynamics, not only of the real world, but also the spiritual world. You know, when we talk about spiritual power or the power of the Holy Spirit, what exactly is that? How do we engage that power in our lives? Um, And then kind of what we're going to do after that is break down chunks of the Sermon on the Mount and see how Jesus gives us a roadmap on how to engage the Holy Spirit life and tap into that power, if you will, in kind of the various aspects of our lives um, that are deeply important and really touch on the power to change um, some of the most broken, some of the most vital, some of the most core kind of emotive powers and desires in our lives so that they are lined up with the kingdom of God. So today we're going to be talking about what exactly is the upside down kingdom of power. And so this idea of upside down kingdom actually came from a a theologian that uh, I really like. His name is N.T. Wright. And in basically to break down the premise, he talks about in his work how the kingdom of God is kind of the, the upside down kingdom. Upside down meaning like kind of opposite or viewed in a totally totally different lens and how we normally view power and how we normally view the kingdoms or the the nations or the governments of this world and so what I want to explore is that idea like power is obviously important to us right Um, whether we like acknowledge that or not really what power is is it helps us us meaning as a people, whether we live in Botswana or the States or at UB or um, wherever you may find yourself, power dynamics in your family, what does power really mean? Power really helps us know who is in charge, right? That's really why do people seek power? Um, Really, it's the authority, the ability to take action, to make decisions, to give direction. Like, that's what power really is, you know? There's physical power, physical strength, but even that, why why do people crave being the best athlete or the best, you know, bodybuilder or the best student or the uh, rising up in the academic system? Really, it's about having the authority and the ability to essentially dictate terms or dictate um, the direction of the, that community in which you hold power. So the president of the United States might not physically be the strongest person. He definitely isn't. Um, but, or Masisi, for our Botswana audience. But the reason why that position is important is they set the direction, they set the tone, they have the authority over the people that are in their charge. It also gives us courage. So when we have 
um, healthy leaders, strong leaders, strong figures of authority. Um, it gives people under that authority courage, boldness, identity. Um, and so power isn't a bad thing. Power is actually a God-created thing um, for our societies to thrive and to live and to flourish. But, you know, obviously the big elephant in the room is power can also be abused like everything else. And kind of what we'll look at in the Sermon on the Mount, there are desires and things that when channeled in the right direction, bring life, bring flourishing, bring truth, bring healing. But if they are channeled in the wrong direction or with the wrong intention or the wrong motive or the wrong source of power, then they can be used for all sorts of evil, all sorts of harm, all sorts of mental and physical and emotional damage. And so power in the wrong hands can do major damage, right? And even good power used for bad means can hurt and destroy. So like a big picture is governments, right? Governmental authority or power is needed in order to have a healthy, structured, organized, thriving community and society. But how many, and you know, you look across the world, not just the continent of Africa, but how many times have we seen societies get thrown into turmoil and violence and anger and greed um, because someone with authority or power used that good power, governing authority, for bad means, whether it was like to personally gain or to siphon off resources, you know, you name it. And that's the big picture, right? But also, there are kind of, let's say, micro power or micro authority in our lives. Maybe that's a teacher or a parent or a role model or a pastor. Those are figures of authority or power um, in our communities and in our lives. And they can be used for good. You know, if you have a, how many of you, you know, who are listening, you can think of your favorite teacher, right? They use their authority as teacher to be a blessing to other people. But there are also teachers who use that authority to bully, to make belittle, and really use their authority for themselves, right? To make themselves feel better. Same with parents. Um, the parental power or authority is built into our very DNA, right? We need our parents. Um, but at the same time, if our parents are unhealthy or they abuse their authority, their ability to tell us yes, no, what we can and cannot do, um, or their negligence of that, then there can be a lot of deep pain. Honestly, this is probably the key area where authority matters the most, right? Like when families are unhealthy, when families are broken, it leads to generational brokenness, potentially without some sort of intervention. So power is a huge, power and authority kind of tied together, is a huge, huge, huge dynamic of our lives. It's deeply important to our everyday function, who has authority over us, who doesn't, who we respect in power, who we don't. And so this idea of power is all over the place in the Bible. And honestly, living in Africa um, for the past three years, I feel like there's a lot of talk about power in church. And that's kind of what I want to navigate through today is power in the spiritual realm, right? So there is authority and power that is given by God to people government, parent, teacher, etc. Those are positions of authority that are made healthy um, when done well, and those are positions of power or authority given by God. But there's also spiritual power, right? There's power in a realm that is close at hand but is not visible um, that can be tapped into as well. It, it, and this power um, can energize our lives in a certain direction. And so this idea of power is talked about a lot in church. And and as I began to listen to pastors and evangelists and all across the states and in Africa, like, you know, this is what helped maybe bring some clarity or maybe had me decide to throw my voice into the ring here. Um, but something uh, that really struck me about following Jesus and his understanding of kingdom power so the kingdom of God, the authority of God on earth is not actually, you know, a, a copy of what we typically think of as human authority and power. Some of those things are God given. But what's interesting is we have an understanding of what a person in power should look like, how they should act, 
what they should do with that power. But what I find super interesting is Jesus introduces a radically different understanding of the usage of power. And when we shift that to maybe the more, and and hear me out, I don't think there is a heavy divide between spiritual power and authority and physical power and authority, physical being like government, teacher, parent, etc. But when we talk about, let's say, um, traditional power or spiritual power in specifically, actually not specifically in African context, more so today, but it's really rising in Europe and the States um, as well. But Throughout history, whether it was ancient European pagan history or Native American history or Asian history or African history, the traditional view of power in the spiritual realm was channeled through witchcraft or doctors or shamans or whatever name that culture has given them, but that was the typical use of spiritual power. And in that understanding of spiritual power, I'm not an expert by any means, but I have at least had some experience and secondhand testimony of how that kind of power in that specific context works. And almost without a without exception, this is how kind of the 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 usage of this spiritual power is used. There is a need by a person or an issue um, or a desire. By an individual or the community, so this could be there's a a disease that's spreading around or there's a job that we really want or there's a relationship that we desire. and So there's a need or an issue or desire by an individual or a community and they go to a person of spiritual authority or power, right? So this in the traditional cultures would be a witch doctor or a shaman or whatever you want to name it. And they would go to this person with this need and... Essentially, what the witch or the shaman or etc. usually requires is an action step. So that's what's fascinating, and what I want to explore throughout this series is it wasn't, it isn't just a, a fact of you go to this person, you get what you need, and it's done. But there typically is a action-oriented contract, you know, not on a piece of paper always but an act that is required to tap into this power. And so, you know, the examples I've given is bathe in this money or, you know, there was a lady in our neighborhood who put a bunch of water bottles around her house. You know, it varies from the very strange to the maybe slightly odd. (laughs) But there is an action step, a required um, motive and action on the individual or community's part in order to engage with the spiritual power, the spiritual entity. And once that occurs, you know, then depending on the actual situation, whether this person was a fraudster or someone who really does dabble in the occult, um, there is a result that happens. And it, it may be the desired result. You may get the thing that you wanted. But there usually is a deeper bargain, right? Not usually. There always is a deeper bargain. We don't realize. And what I want to talk about today is that idea that the Bible speaks on very clearly. In the New Testament, when Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God, he really doesn't give any gray room um, for a middle ground you know, he says things like, if you aren't with me, you're against me, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. And so there's this idea that in the background of all of our lives, there is a spiritual power dynamic that is happening. That there is a force, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, whatever name you want to get it, and a kingdom of darkness, a, a, an anti-kingdom power, an anti-Christ, anti-Messiah power that is operating in the world through the actions and spiritual power channeled through people. And so, as I was thinking about it, you know, I'll be honest with my skeptical Western background mind, I used to kind of squint my eyes at these power talks. But as I began to really open up to this idea and allow the Holy Spirit to speak into it, I realized that yes, our entire lives, every action of our day, every reaction, every word, every thought is an opportunity to engage in the kingdom battle. 
And, and so we have to understand, as we're talking about power, as we're talking about spiritual power specifically, spiritual power is often the power resting behind the actions that we take. So let's break this down a little bit. Um, what does that mean in practicality? And we will dive into the specifics on the Sermon on the Mount. So I want to talk in generalizations. There may be some overlap. But in this episode, uh, I want to just touch on that idea that every action, every choice that we make in our lives, even little or small, and this may seem overwhelming to some of you, or maybe uh, taking it to the extreme, But there is no neutral action in our lives. When we choose to say yes to one thing and no to another, we are, in a sense, making an allegiance statement. And so, really, the the crux of the issue, when we look at the biblical narrative, is that the children of Israel in the Old Testament were meant to be kingdom of light people to a pagan world, to a world that was dabbling in the kingdom of darkness and the power of darkness to varying degrees, but the problem is that Israel, you know, just like the nations, dabbled in those same things, that they were unable to fully live into the kingdom of light power. And, and God's whole purpose and mission is that we would rest and live in his power, in his energizing force, in his presence, so that our lives can engage in the true kingdom, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of hope, the kingdom of love, the kingdom of truth, Right? All these terms that are used in the biblical narrative. But the actions of the Israelites revealed that they were really living in the kingdom of darkness. Regardless of the rules or the knowledge that they held, their actions, the things that they were doing, were really creating a deeper bargain and alliance with a different sort of kingdom. And you see this when Jesus, you know, confronts the Pharisees and he says, you are children of your father, the devil, the father of lies, because your actions, you can't testify to the truth. You don't recognize that I am from the father. And so you really are liars. You don't have the kingdom inside of you. You have a different kingdom. And, you know, this was obviously super offensive to them because they truly believe that they belong to the kingdom of light. And we'll see you in the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus says, you know, how dark is your darkness if you think that it is light? And I I really do think that was a direct jab at some of these um, kind of spiritual leaders who who couldn't recognize the kingdom of light because they had become so blinded to their own motives and desires. And so we say all that to say, or I say all that to say, like there is a kingdom power dynamic in the actions, in the thoughts, in the practices of our lives, and we engage a certain power by the things that we do. So, if we want to engage the kingdom of heaven, and this is the premise that we're going to be working with over the next few weeks as we dive into the Sermon on the Mount. If there is a kingdom of God power, a Holy Spirit power, Jesus says, when the Holy Spirit comes in power, you know, you will be baptized in his power, that you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth, witnesses of the kingdom, witnesses of, ultimately, and this is what we talked about at the beginning, a new source of authority and power in the world. So if power is the authority of who's in charge, we have to understand then that to live in the kingdom of God means that we live under and for and through the power and authority of Jesus. If he is king of the world, if he is really enthroned at the right hand of the Father, that is a power and authority position in which he now operates through his people. And just like a representative or an ambassador of America or Botswana really doesn't operate under their own authority and power, they get their authority and power from you know, the head of that government, whether it be the president or whoever, a king in a different country, they operate under that authority. They don't speak on their own behalf, but they speak on behalf of the authority in which they're under. And so in the same way, the people of the kingdom of light now come under the authority of the Son. So all of that to say, and this is the big question that I want to explore, is which kingdom are we living under? And really, how do we understand that? How do we begin to engage in the kingdom of God? Because it is an upside-down kingdom. Upside-down, really, it's the right side up. 
Um, but we are the ones that are upside down. But it is upside down to the way that we often think of how we need to interact into the world. So Jesus invites us through the Sermon on the Mount, Sermon on the Mount to understand that in his authority, in the kingdom of, of the Father, there is a new way to operate, live, and act in power. In, in order for us to engage the Holy Spirit's power in our lives, the power to change, the power to be transformed, the power to become a new creation, the power to overcome sickness, the power to overcome lies, the power to overcome trauma, there is an action that we must engage in in order to tap into the power of God's Holy Spirit that transforms our lives. And so I think that's the big step that we need to realize as we dive into this section is that in order to understand, not just understand, but to experience God's power in our lives, because so many of us, you know, live our lives saying that we follow Jesus, that we're a disciple of Jesus, that we love God and we love other people, but we still live pretty powerless. We live um, feeling like life just happens to us, that we're we're hit in the face and we don't know how to react, or we struggle to walk in love towards other people, or forgiveness, or we hold on to some of these things in our hearts that we know are unhealthy or eating away at us or create shame. And so how do we have the power, the God-given Holy Spirit power, to break what the Bible would call those chains of bondage, the chains of sin, to be a slave to sin or a slave to God? How do we become slaves to God rather than a slave to sin? Because is the power of the Holy Spirit too weak to help us? Or are we not tapping into that power that God has already provided to any who would call themselves um, disciples of Jesus? And so how do we tap into that power? And I believe, as we'll explore, that the Sermon of the Mount gives us the action step the if you will if we're going back to the traditional power of the spiritual realm the the allegiance movement the the bargain of our lives to tap into the power of god and bargain's not a great word because we don't have to bargain for god's love that's not where you know and i think this is where terms are really important so let me backtrack very quickly We're not talking about earning God's love. God's love is already for us. We're actually not talking about the forgiveness of sins. Everyone's sins because of the cross are already forgiven. But do we have access to that forgiveness? You know, and that's where the action step on our part comes in is that on the cross, the power of sin, again, here's the power dynamic, the authority of sin and death over our lives is broken at the cross, that its authority is stripped away and gives way to the power of Jesus. But we cannot access that power, the new life resurrection power, until we what? We believe and place our faith in Jesus. We become aligned and partners with the power of God rather than the power of darkness. Because until we live under the authority of Jesus, sin in the kingdom of darkness still holds authority over our lives. And that's where the rubber meets the road. Is that really Jesus has done everything, as the Bible says, to rescue us, save us, redeem us, give us a new kind of power and life to live under. But now we have to decide which kingdom are we going to come under the authority. And that's where the gray zone does not exist. Because we either are under the authority and power of sin, and it still controls our lives, our actions, our thoughts, our hearts, our motives, or we are under the authority of King Jesus. And under his authority, we are slowly but surely molding and transforming our lives to reflect his kingdom, his authority, his power over our lives. And so what we will look at is in each different area, whether it has to do with anger and forgiveness and contempt and reconciliation or being able to overcome forbidden desire. And that's not just sexual. It is sexual. Sexuality is a part of that. But there are all sorts of forbidden desires in our hearts. How we honor others, how we keep our vows, how we conquer evil, how we fight against evil. 
our motives when we give and we pray and we fast, where our treasure in life is really located, what shapes our desires, and ultimately what kingdom are we building our lives on. All of that is explored in the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus, in his great mercy and love, gives us a layout of what are the action steps. What are the things that we need to do to begin to model our lives after the kingdom of God and really tap into the power of the kingdom of God to transform our lives? So I'm really excited that we will get to look at this. We'll get to explore how we can actually engage the kingdom of God in our lives. And my hope, my prayer is that as we do that, we will begin to see um, the results, the results of God's power actively taking hold of our lives and our hearts to help us overcome some of these deep-seated sin issues in our lives. So I wanted to keep this brief, and you know we're going to look at it section by section, so hopefully each episode will will not be super long, hopefully 15 to 20 minutes. But uh, I'm excited for this series that's coming up. I hope that uh, it's exciting for you all as well. And uh, yeah, I hope everything is going well on the campus for my Kingdom Movement family and any other listeners, whether you be in the States or somewhere else. We really appreciate your support and listening of the Kingdom Movement podcast. And if it's been any benefit to you, uh, if it's spoken any any life into you or helped encourage you on your, your discipleship journey with Jesus, share the podcast. Let other people know. We definitely um, want this to spread if it's an encouraging tool uh, because we want to equip and empower, um, and really motivate the Kingdom of God family all around the world to become disciple makers themselves, to become people of the kingdom, right? Because that is the solution of this world, is that the people of God would really operate under the power and authority of God so that we can see the kingdom increasingly um, advance on this earth. So love you, Kingdom Movement family. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And yeah, give the pot a share. Spread the word. We really appreciate it. Catch you next time. Hey guys, this is Jake. If you are currently a university student on a campus in Botswana, we want to extend an invitation to you to get plugged into a discipleship group. So if you're interested, if that's something you want to do, if you want to begin to be a part of this family we call Kingdom Movement, we would encourage you to go into this episode's bio. There should be a link to our Instagram page. You can send us a message And we will make sure to connect to you at a time and a place that works best for you and your schedule for school. But we don't want you to miss this opportunity to get plugged in and a part of what God is doing on the university campuses here. Because we believe that you're a vital piece to what God wants to do to bring his kingdom, his wholeness, and his healing to the nation of Botswana and to the university specifically. So reach out to us today, guys, if that's something you're interested in. All right. Thanks.